So you've studied your ass off and step one is just around the corner and you're starting to feel those nerves start to kick in. You know, your palms are starting to get sweaty, your knees are weak, you feel like you're gonna puke, you know, mom's spaghetti. You guys know the rap, but we don't wanna be like another Eminem lyric. Instead, we're gonna talk about how not to choke on the day of step one with these few tips. I promise you are gonna make you dominate on test day. Let's also keep that confidence rolling. So tip number one is to focus on one question at a time. So one thing that I realized after my step one experience is that I could have had a completely different score if my test was arranged in a different way. So I could have had a better score if my stronger questions were kind of better formatted and better arranged and a weaker score if all my weak topics were kind of put into one area and that could have affected my momentum. In one scenario, I could have felt completely prepared. In another scenario, I felt like I probably didn't study for the right exam and it's exact same questions. And that's a very important takeaway that you need to remember because the overall test for you is likely very doable, especially if you've studied, again, your beep off while you're studying for step one. But you may just have an unlucky streak of questions where you just don't feel confident in, and it doesn't matter how many streaks of questions you had momentum in and you felt strong in, those weak questions are going to tend to linger in your mind. And so what that leads you to do is you go through this vicious cycle of saying this test is too hard or self-deprecating yourself or starting to second guess on all of your choices. So instead you need to focus on one question at a time. And to make the point, I wanna share with you my actual experience on test one, how each individual block went. So block number one felt like completely doable. Block number two, I just kind of went into it and I felt very confident and strong. And so I was like, all right, I got this test. This, this got nothing on me. And then block number three hit and I just felt terrible. And I don't even remember block number four because I was so focused on thinking about block number three. And specifically I was focused on, holy crap, I ruined it. My test score is gonna suck and I'm likely not gonna get the score that I wanted. But keep in mind, at this point, I only had taken about half the exam. Two of them I felt like I did really well. I can't remember block four to be quite honest with you, but one of them really led me down the self-deprecating kind of vicious cycle that we already talked about. But thankfully the younger version of myself is responsible for the reason this tip even exists because when I had my lunch break after my fourth block, I remember going into the restroom, splashing some of my water in the face and said, God dang it, Lux, like get it together. You've prepared your butt off for this exam and you've literally let one block completely throw you off. Instead, from now on, every question is going to be an opportunity to raise your score. Anything you don't know is going to be an opportunity to possibly improve your score. And if you don't know it, shrug it off, move on to the next one. And so using that little pep talk, I kept going and going and I started to feel the test again, get back into my control. So don't be like me on test day and instead get that same sense of control from the very start and keep it all the way through for the duration of the exam. Remember when you start your first block, tell yourself one question at a time. Now. Tip number two for test day for step one is to plan your breaks ahead of time. Now for step one, as in making of this video, you'll have an allocated total about 16 minutes. If you take 45 minutes that they already give you, plus the 15 minutes if you don't go through the tutorial because you've already gone through it in other forms of practice exams. And so that gives you 16 minutes and that doesn't even count extra time that you start to gain if you finish a question block ahead of schedule. And so with the knowledge that you'll have at least 60 minutes, you need to plan each break and understanding how long you'll spend in between each blocks, when you'll take your lunch breaks, when you plan on taking your restroom breaks, and just have a game plan for the entire day. And so on test days of making this video, you'll have seven blocks. So here's a sample schedule of how you can arrange your different breaks. So after block one, you can take a five minute break. After block two, you can take another five minute break. After block three, you can take a longer break for a bathroom break or a snack, take a 10 minute break. After block four, this is typically where I recommend that you try to schedule in your lunch for about 20 minutes and use the restroom, just refresh. After block five, make the breaks a little bit longer. So now 10 minutes all each. After block five, make your breaks a little bit longer because you may be a little bit more tired. So a 10 minute break after block five, after block six, another 10 minute break and you're done with the exam after you do block number seven. And as a pro tip, if you're feeling like me on test day and you start to feel that momentum and you're like, I feel great, I'm just gonna move on to the next block, don't do it. But as you've learned through my own experience, you have no idea how hard or how easy a block is going to be and that can completely throw off your momentum and that can even become more damaging, especially if your energy levels are already lower than they should be. So if you wanna keep that sense of momentum, just focus on one question at a time. As soon as you finish a block, ideally you still have that sense of momentum, go take your break, get re-energized and come back to the block that may be easier or hard, but regardless, you have the energy level ready to combat it. Now test day tip number three is to plan for the test well the day before. Last, so the last thing that you wanna do after you've studied incredibly hard for step one is to have some small detail that you didn't account for throw you off or something that's not even knowledge related. And so a few things to keep in mind, a week to a day before the exam are things like know the address of your testing center, what time do they want you to be there, and also account for any traffic you should expect the morning of your exam. 
Also keep mind of any documents that you need to bring, like your ID, driver's license, testing permits, or anything else that the testing center may have specifically for you. Next, you want to consider about what clothes you'll be wearing as well as bringing to the testing center. Most testing centers have a tendency of being on the colder end, so having a nice good jacket or warm clothing that you can easily also take off in case you start to become warm is super important. Also remember, don't go to step one in a suit. This is not one of those occasions where you dress for success. Next and very important on the list is to think about what food and beverages you'll be bringing. Be mindful of what kind of foods make you personally sleepy, things like processed or carb heavy foods and stay away from those. And also be mindful of your caffeine sources and when you plan on taking them before and during the exam because having to go to the restroom in the middle of a block may throw you off. And finally, start to ask questions regarding specifically your transportation. Are you driving yourself? Is your gas filled? Are your tires complete? Is somebody dropping you off? Do they know what time to pick you up? Or are you going to take public transportation? And have you accounted for all the logistics? Because like the famous saying goes, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Don't do that. So test day tip number four is to plan an amazing post-test reward. Now this is probably my favorite tip to give because I definitely took full advantage of this and I'll share that in a second, but you have studied so hard for such an important test in your life that you need to make sure that the reward at the end of that tunnel is completely worth it. And I remember exactly what I did after test one. I had already had it in my mind going into test day the week of. I went to my favorite Indian restaurant. I grabbed two entrees of my favorite dish at this restaurant, which was two dishes of malai kofta with naan and rice and completely warm and I got home and just destroyed both entrees and just passed out until the next day. It was just absolutely amazing. So if you're watching this video and you're getting close to test day, or if you're anywhere remotely on your step one prep, also start asking what you want to do as a reward to yourself for studying so hard. But overall guys, yes, step one is a hard exam to prepare for, but if you've put in such hard work over the past few weeks, then definitely make sure that you go into test day with confidence and not anxiety. And I know that's easier said than done, but hopefully you can use some of these tips that we talked about in this episode to help you go into test day and just crush it like you're meant to. And now, and before we conclude for today's episode, if you did enjoy today's video and you have more questions regarding step one, make sure you drop them in the comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you do want to check out probably the most popular video that we have on the YouTube channel, then go ahead and check out my step one, five tips that you need to know to get a high score, like a 250 or above, like myself, as well as other top performing students. And then finally, if you want to know the three strategies that really helped me kind of get into the upper echelon of doing doing well on step one, there's a step one masterclass free video absolutely that you guys can check out down below on the website. And as always, if you enjoyed the tips, if you enjoy the content, I really ask for just two things from you. One, just take something from this video that really resonated with you and try to apply it into your personal situation. We spend so much of our time consuming and taking advice. I'm guilty for this as well, no doubt, but rarely do we always spend enough time applying it. So take one thing from this video and this episode that resonated with you and let me know in the comment section down below what results you're getting. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this episode. If you did enjoy this video, then you'll probably enjoy this video too to help you succeed on your step one journey. With that being said, thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys and yours, and I'll see you guys next one. Peace, my friends.